Hello everyone, I'm Steven and you're watching Steven Love Science. And in today's video, we're going to discuss the process by which all of our blood cells come about, hematopoiesis. Science is the best tool ever devised for understanding how the world works. Science is a very human form of knowledge. We are always at the brink of the known. Science is a collaborative enterprise spanning the generations. So when discussing hematopoiesis, we're going to discuss a process that occurs in the bone marrow, predominantly in the long bones of the arms, legs, and hip. So looking at the bottom of the board over here, we can see two main groups of blood cells. The myeloid cells, which include our red blood cells or erythrocytes, as well as our granulocytes, which include neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, etc. Our platelets, our dendritic cells, our monocyte, which can then become an activated macrophage, and looking over here, we have our lymphoid cells, which include, again, dendritic cells, the, um, the um, NK cell, and our major players in adaptive immunity, our B and T lymphocytes. So when discussing hematopoiesis, we have to discuss a process that allows one cell to go into any of these types of cells down here and more that I have not included on the board. So I believe in previous videos, we've discussed cells that are capable of differentiating into any type of cell, and these are called stem cells. So up here, we have our hematopoietic stem cell, which we can abbreviate HSC. So the hematopoietic stem cell is what's known as a pluripotent stem cell, which is a general term to describe a, set, a, a stem cell that is capable of differentiating into any specific kind of cell. For example, the hematopoietic stem cell is a pluripotent stem cell that can differentiate into any type of blood cell, be it a lymphocyte or erythrocyte or a megakaryocyte. This is in contrast to what's called a totipotent stem cell or very early on embryonic stem cells, which, which can differentiate into any cell in the body. These hematopoietic stem cells can only become blood cells. So, when we start off over here with our hematopoietic stem cell, it really has three choices it can make. It can either renew itself and become another hematopoietic stem cell, in which we see the involvement of the transcription factor BMI1. So to renewal, we see BMI1 involvement. Or it can make the decision to then either become a, a myeloid cell or a lymphoid cell. Once it makes the decision to become a myeloid or lymphoid cell, we can see that it is lin positive, meaning lineage positive. It will select the lineage. This is versus the hematopoietic stem cell up here, which has not made the decision, which is lin negative. So with the lin positive decision, we see the upregulation of a transcription factor called GATA2. All right? So now it can either become a lymphoid cell or a myeloid cell. If it chooses to become a lymphoid cell, we can see the upregulation of another transcription factor called Icaros. And this is really completely dominated by transcription factors, so I just want to discuss a few of the major ones that play the largest roles. So we see the uh, transcription factor Icaros, and now we have a cell that can become any lymphoid cell. And this is called the common lymphoid progenitor, which we can uh, abbreviate CLP. And the common lymphoid progenitor can become a dendritic cell, it can become an NK cell, or become a B or T cell. So going down this line, the major, tra the major transcription factors involved in either becoming a B or T cell is what's called the Notch family of transcription factors. And once again, this is very complicated and I don't want to get into, so just know that Notch family of transcription factors involved in B or T cell decision and some others in NK or dendritic cell decision as well as others. So now going over here to this side, we have yet to discuss really the myeloid path. So the myeloid path is really the default path, and there are many other just transcription factors involved. So we, I don't really want to talk about those in too much detail. So we can either go a myeloid path, where we have some general transcription factors, many of them involved. Once again, instead of being a common lymphoid progenitor at this stage, we have a common myeloid progenitor, or CMP. So the common myeloid progenitor, once again, can either become a red blood cell, erythrocyte, or any of these myeloid cells down here. So an interesting thing that I wanted to point out is that it only takes 50 to 100 of these hematopoietic stem cells to replenish the entire blood supply in the human body. And that's very important, especially for autologous 
uh, transplants and whatnot. So you have someone who has maybe a blood cancer, you can take some of their healthy hematopoietic stem cells or maybe their leg, keep those, wipe out their entire uh, blood supply uh, with radiation, and then inject those 50 to 100 cells back in them, they have a completely regenerated healthy blood supply. So I'm looking forward to discussing um, in more detail myeloid and lymphoid cells in our upcoming video and hopefully this provided a good segue for us to understand how these cells come about in the first place. So thanks for watching this episode of Stephen Loves Science and see you next week.